Yeah. And then you help the one and only Mr. Tom Ferry to start his company. And you've coached agents from all over the globe. So join us for season two. Welcome to this week's episode of Hey Home Girl. Hey home girls, welcome back to another amazing episode. We are in Knoxville, Tennessee with Debbie Holloway, who hands down is the fairy godmother of all female real estate agents. In Debbie's 30 year plus career, she has seen it all. She has been an amazing powerhouse broker owner. She has owned a mortgage company, I believe she's owned a title company. And even more importantly, she has coached thousands of agents all over the world, teams, individual agents, broker owners, recruiters, managers, the whole kick and caboodle. Today, she is going to share with us why she is so passionate about our real estate industry and how being a female in real estate is one of the most empowering positions a woman can hold, not only in the business world, but in their own community. On this week's episode, she is going to share with us some of the challenges that women face in our real estate industry and how they can overcome them and what they can do to propel their business forward in 2024. Let's get started. Hey, homegirls. This week, we are in Louisville, Kentucky with someone who I would probably say is a fairy godmother to all real estate agents, the one and only Debbie Holloway. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Your background is so extensive and you've not only been an agent, but you've owned brokerages, you've owned mortgage companies or title companies I also? I did. We don't, we don't own title companies in Kentucky, but I did own a mortgage company, a development company and a real estate company. Yeah. And then you helped the one and only Mr. Tom Ferry to start his company and you've coached agents from all over the globe. Mm -hmm, I have. Yeah, it's so amazing. And so today you're going to share a little bit with us about your story and maybe we can dig into some topics that will help some of our female listeners. I hope I can. You know, one of the things that's important to me is, is helping women, lifting them up and doing just kind of being there for women when they need help in the business, because that didn't happen for me. When I got in the business, it was 1981 and the interest rates were 18%. So everyone thought I was crazy, which it's, when they told me the rates were 18%, I said, so is that a problem? I didn't really understand yet because I was a brand new agent that interest rates mattered. Probably should have checked that out at the time, but I didn't. And then people either didn't like you for doing business or couldn't understand why you would be in real estate because at 18%, it's a tough market. And then yeah. two months after I got in, they went to 21%. So it was a very tough market and it was predominantly a men's world. And you know, they'd say, oh, honey, I had I uh, helped put on a, a week long celebration for property rights through our board of realtors and won an award and a trip to Hawaii to accept it at the national convention. And I was at reception at our brokerage and a gentleman from Lexington came and he said, you know, I think you've got potential. And he said, I keep an apartment here and I'd be more than happy to help you. You could just come over to my apartment. We could get to know each other and I could help you in your business. And I'm looking, I'm going, I'm a married woman with a baby. Have you lost your mind? I mean, I couldn't understand just how women were treated in the early 80s in real estate. And what made it doubly hard is you had men like that out there. And then you had women. I remember getting turned into the board, I don't know, six, eight, 10 times in my career, because there was one woman that sat on the grievance committee that didn't like me. She didn't sell much real estate, but she sat on the grievance committee. So it was, I think it was tough at the time. I think it's still tough for women. Yeah. I feel like we finally started to see a shift where it's not so much competition. Female agents seem to be so much more focused on collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm really hoping that that is the trend that carries us through the better half of the rest of my career. You know, I think back in 2015, when I went to Tom and Kathy, and I said, I want to start an event for women, women influencing real estate, which I will tell you, this is kind of newsflash. It's not really out yet. We've changed the name to women impacting real estate and changing the logo up and we're doing on our women right now, it's women influencing real estate on Facebook and on Instagram. But if you go to Facebook every Wednesday, we do a just a five minute conversation twice a month. Now we're doing webinars, Zoom events with women that are experts in a certain area. Or if there's a woman out there that says, I'd love to be able to share what I'm doing here. We need to provide a path for women to show what they know and to share what they know and to interact and build their business through referrals like that. So I'm really excited about the things we're going to be doing and and this year, we're going to focus on actually some smaller events, 25 to 30 women. We're 
looking at one on Block Island and uh, right off Rhode Island, I believe it is. Uh, one in Destin, Florida, and one uh, between New Jersey and New York. Big golf course community, which will probably be a little bit bigger one. So we're doing a lot, and I hope that your female followers will join our Women Influencing Real Estate page and speak up and let us recognize them and let us promote them. That's what it's all about. That would be wonderful. So with the women in real estate or the women impacting real estate, those women can come in via any stage of their career. They can come from any real estate background, any brokerage. They don't have to be part of a coaching ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They can just come and be a part of that community. No. In fact, the majority of the women in the, uh, we've got like 8,600 women. The majority of the women are not in our Tom Ferry ecosystem. It does not make any difference to us. It's about women, helping women, providing information for women, helping them grow their business. Doesn't matter. They can be entitled or mortgage. They can be an attorney. They can be a sta stager. Anything, which just about anything does, touch real estate. A builder. I'd love to interview a couple of female builders. That would be fun. Yeah. I just recently had a female home inspector and she was so detail oriented mm -hmm. and it was just one of the best home inspections I've had in so long. So mm -hmm. I love to see women getting into our business in all different ways. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very, very cool. Okay. And so there's a Facebook community that women can join. It's called right now. Women Influencing Real Estate is the Facebook page right now. We'll be changing that and moving it to Women Impacting. Um, got a lot of really cool things we're going to be doing next year. So stay tuned and get on that page. I would primarily say the Facebook page. You can go to the Instagram page. I don't know exactly what all they're doing with that right now, but primarily the Facebook page. Okay. And I'll put all the links for this ladies in our bio. Um, and in our show notes so that you have it. And I'll put it in captions at the bottom of the screen so that you can find the links right there. One of the things that Debbie and I discussed maybe talking about today is since she has really been helping real estate women all over the country and the world for so many years, what are some of the trends that, that you've seen, Debbie, that hold women back or where they struggle a little bit? You know, when you had asked me that question or right before we started this podcast, I thought of several things and I thought, you know, it doesn't really change a lot whether you got your license in 81, 91, 2012 or now. I think confidence is always a big thing for women, whether it is they don't know what they don't know. So there's a lack of confidence or somebody's trying to keep them down, keeping their thumb on them, it's lack of confidence. I think part of that comes from work life choices. I'm, I'm not a big fan of saying work life balance. It doesn't exist in all my years of being in this industry and having other businesses. Work life balance, it's never balanced. It's really more about how you feel at that point. You know, if you're working hard and you're enjoying what you're doing, good for you. If you're at home with your family, good for you. The beauty of women is I do believe we have choices. And I think it's the choices we make that make us happy or stress us out. One of the things when I started in coaching with Tom, I was single and broke. So I signed up for coaching with no money and it ended up Tom was my first coach. And in our conversation, he gave me four things he said, I want you to live your life by. And the first thing he said is he said, I want you to be a yes. I'm going to ask you to do things that are going to grow your business. Will they make you uncomfortable? Likely because it's new to you, but be a yes, be open to it. Don't resist it. And I think resistance, regardless, male or female, there's always resistance. And we have to push through that and be a yes anyway. And the second thing he said is, I want you to focus. When you're with your son, focus on your son. Because when he's playing t-ball and you're on your phone, don't think he doesn't notice that. When he wants to watch a movie and you're typing on your computer while you're watching the movie, that's not being with him. That's it's not focusing on him. By the same token, when you're at work, understand he is someplace safe with somebody that cares about him because he was little. And just do your job. Do your job 150% and get it done. Make a difference while you're at work so that you can feel good about going home and spending time with him. So those two things, he said, yes, and be a focus and focus. Very, very true. I think we don't own our value. And I think this is going to become even more important with the change potentially with buyer brokerage. I think we don't really own and appreciate our value. I don't, I think because of things that are said to us, I know my husband, when we were dating, wanted me to go to an event and I said, you know, I can't, I need to, I was either work an offer or show a hat 
house. And he said, you know, I don't get it. It's, it's not like real estate's a real job. And I married him anyway. I don't know. However, that is what most of the public thinks about real estate agents, male or female. It's not a real job. And it's even more so a thought with a female realtor. And I don't care if you're a full-time woman in, woman in real estate or part-time. I've never seen a true part-time agent because you still work a lot. <laughs> Own that you're a professional. I mean, and I said to him, that's not how it works. Have a really good time at the event. I'm going to do my job. And he caught on real quick. And I think what happens is we have to understand we really run a small business. This isn't a hobby. This isn't, I don't see how it's ever part-time because when you work for a client, you work for them a lot. And we're all independent contractors. Yes. We're all self-employed. So every agent that's out there is running their own small business. A hundred percent. It is. It is a small business, just like any other small business. You have to have a PL, you have to go to work, you have to have results. So I think we have to understand and honor the fact that we are in an honorable profession. We are in a great profession that helps people. And I think a big part of supporting our confidence is understanding that we're not just in a, not in a real job or a part-time job or not like people who have to go to work. I think we work harder than most people that are nine to five. Yeah. And I think we need to pat ourselves on the back for that. I think we're going to need to really have to find a way to state our value as an agent representing buyers. Years ago, I did this for the company uh, where I worked. I created a one page document of all the things we do for first time home buyers. And it was lengthy and in small print. So there was a lot there to help the newer agents who typically were working with first time home buyers have confidence in what they're presenting and in their value. We're mm -hmm. going to need to create the same kind of thing for all of our buyers because buyers going directly to the listing agent, it is an option. I would never do that. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We're not quite finished yet, but as the home girl of your hometown, I would love to pass the mic to you so that you can share your story and some of your secrets with the home girl community. To apply, please go to howtobeahomegirl.com in the show notes. Because here's the advocating. thing. Well, no, because the person on the other side is getting paid by the seller. They're going to want to get as much money for the seller. That's in their contract with them. We need to be representing the buyer, just like an attorney. You wouldn't go to court. I say this. You wouldn't go to court to get a divorce and use the same attorney as your soon-to-be ex. That never seems to go well. So I think we really need to work on that. And I think we need to, for those of you that have had buyer brokerage agreements or buyer commitment letters, we need to get back to that. And if you haven't done it, you really need to. You need something that shows what you do for them, that they sign off understanding they can get out of it at any time, just like you can with the listing. However, they need to fully understand the commitment you make in helping them as a buyer. In all of your years of coaching, when you had a newer agent on board with you and they came to you and they wanted you to be their coach, how did you get them to understand that they weren't just an agent, that they were a small business owner? I think one of the first things I did is ask for a P&L which mm -hmm. no one had. <laughs> And I'd say, well, we need to know how your business is doing. So I would have them send me, typically they had a business credit card. So I had them send me either the year in statement from the year before or several statements so that we could look at where they're spending their money. And then I would provide them with just a simple P&L that they could figure out and use. I think it's well worth the money for everyone to find an accountant or a CPA. I ended up, my sister-in-law was, worked as a financial accountant for somebody else and did it on the side for me. Somebody needs to help you if that's not something you do well, figure out what you're spending. I took a new client on several years ago and she was broke. I'm like this kid, she's making, she's selling a lot of houses. I figured out she was losing about 150,000 a year and had been for several years, but she never looked at it. Well, yeah. We don't want to have to look at it because we know there's a problem. I think the very first thing is to figure out what your numbers are because your numbers never lie. And once I know your numbers, then we can begin to look at what we need to cut and what we need to add. There's a lot of waste, I think, every year. When you get to the end of the year, you look at what you've been spending and you can probably cut 10 to 20%. I would completely and should. You know, as we're heading into 2024, it's just weeks away at this point. I know mm -hmm. all of us are in business planning mode and, you know, I get find so 
many female agents that I've spoken with that have never business planned before. It's, it's true because most people just say, and I was the same way when I got into the business, I don't want to know. I'm just going to work really hard and hope this works out because I'm afraid if I know it, it'll be horrible. I'll feel terrible because I'm not doing what I need to do. And then when Tom finally sat down, sat down with me and he said, let's just make this real simple. How many deals do you want to do? How? And, and I came up with that number and he said, okay, so let's figure out how many conversations you need to have. And he broke it down into its simplest forms. So I knew I needed six or seven conversations a day to reach my goal. And then he said, but it gets easier. If you have conversations at an open house on Sunday, you can count those towards the upcoming week's contact. Yeah, I like this. So I'll do more open houses that way. And he said, if you're going out to lunch or out to dinner or to an event and you talk to people about real estate, you can't go up to them and go, let's talk real estate. But they typically <laughs> ask you, how's the market? And he yeah. gave me a great response, not, oh, the market's great, but just to say, you know, it depends on if you're buying, selling, renting, or investing, which are you most interested in? Open-ended questions. So I started learning how to do that. All of those count as contacts. So it's really not that hard. I remember it was a couple of years ago, I believe at a summit event. And, and Tom said, real estate is the sexiest thing in the world to talk about. Everybody wants to talk about real estate. Yeah. And the reality is that is so true. And so many of us shut down instead of embracing that, mm -hmm. but making sure that you have the confidence to give the answers, making sure that you're studying your market so that you can just rattle things off. And everybody knows that you are the go-to person in your hyper-local community. It is. And what I love about hyper-local is that it's become so much more important with Zillow and all these online leads. People still want to do people, do business with people that are like them. People still want to have a personal relationship. Now, not all of it. There's probably 10% that does not. Majority do. And I think our job is to be that person that connects with them. Because as real estate agents, our job is to connect people with property, people with people. That's our job. Yeah. I recently just did a high school college fair with some of my teammates and all the kids were coming up to me and they were like, well, what do you do? And two of my girls said, oh, we're in sales. We sell houses. And I looked at them and I looked at the students and I said, we actually build communities because I feel that's what I do. I build my community and I make sure that people embrace the community that they're moving into. You know? 100%. And we, when we sell a house in a community, it's likely we know other people. So we introduce them or we send something out introducing those people. We're connectors. Yes. Women are the best at that anyway. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Well, while we wrap up every show, I ask all of the guests on what is one piece of advice that you would give to empower either agents that female agents that are currently working in our marketplace or women that are thinking of getting into real estate? I think that real estate actually can give you flexibility if you have a really good morning schedule. So I don't think I would say don't shy away from it because you think you have to work 24 seven, you can work a lot. But there's so many ways to partner up or to team up or to hire someone someone that gets paid based on you getting paid. There's so many great ways to, to set this up so it can work for you. I think honestly, now is probably one of the best times to get into real estate because people that got into real estate when the market was hot, all they needed to know was how to use DocuSign. Yes. So we have yep. a whole lot of agents out there that are not knowledgeable. And a lot of them are getting out of the business, which is great. If they want to get out, get out. Right now, I think somebody getting into the business would be a great idea. I think the rates really aren't that bad. Of course, I compare them to 18% and they seem very low, but they're really not that bad. I think if you if you love helping people, if you love being a connector, if you love the challenge, um, if you like change, if it's not the same monotonous thing every day, I think real estate can be an, an incredible career for a woman. So I, I would say if you're not in the business, this would be a great time to get into the business. I think if you are in the business, I would tell you to do a couple of very specific things. Make sure you have a non-negotiable morning schedule at least four days a week. That consists of the time you get into the office for about two hours. That's it. It doesn't, it's not your whole day. It's not until noon. If yeah. your morning two to two and a half hour schedule is the same, at least four days a week, you're going to win if you're doing the right things in that two to two and a half hours. The second thing I would tell you to look at is who in the business is getting out because they got in when it was hot and now they don't know what to do and they don't want to do it anymore. Or who has been in the business a long time and been through these kind of markets two or three times before, and they don't want to go through it again. Those are great candidates to partner with and buy their book 
book of business and it doesn't have to cost you anything up front. It's a wonderful opportunity to jumpstart your real estate business. And thirdly, I think it's really important for everyone, whether you want to get in the business or you're in the business now, take a look at what's available in classes, whether it's classes through somebody like Tom Ferry, board classes, a national association of realtor classes. You need to get involved and get better educated. Yeah. Things change all the time. I'm not one of those coaches that says, oh my God, you need to learn how to do all of this marketing. I say, do what's free and then find somebody that in a trade-off will do the marketing for you because I was always a believer. I don't know how, need to know how to do this. I need to know how to find somebody to do it for me so I can focus on what I do best. And that is bringing a buyer and seller together. That's my job. Everything else I find someone else to do. Now in the beginning, sure, you're going to do some of that, but there are always, I mean, I've had a videographer who does weddings do videos during the week. We have a great video on the Women Influencing Real Estate page by Jenny Smith down in Atlanta. And she talks about how she got started with a videographer and doing videos with no money. It's a really good one to watch. All right. Oh, that's excellent. Those tips are so, so necessary right now. So thank you for providing those for our listeners. My pleasure. Anything for you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to finding out more about those retreats that are coming up and some other possible women in real estate events coming in 2024, because I was lucky enough to go on a retreat with you last year. Well, this year, and it was just such a special four days. And the connections I made with those women are just unbelievable. So supportive. Thank you. It was a ton of fun and we learned a lot. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you. That was great, Debbie.